So here we are in 2023, and you're a very seasoned clinician uh, with obviously a very bright mind. Um, I stroll into the hospital as a 64-year-old um, Caucasian executive, um, let's say uh, male, or I stroll into the hospital as a 64-year-old uh, African-American woman uh, of uh, lesser economic means. We've both got fever. We both got cough. Uh, we both have some purulent sputum. I mean, typical things. I, in your perspective, where are we in 2023? Just broad strokes. Are, are we, you know, how are we dealing? Are we dealing with humans as humans? Or are we still profiling them to some degree and treating them differently and making assumptions that could even be a detriment to their optimal care? Absolutely. We are absolutely still making assumptions that negatively impact the care of people of color. And I see it all the time um, uh, in medicine. And so um, so let's let, let's let's take um, uh, a, a woman who was in her late 50s or early 60s who actually came in um, for um, a, 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 a cardiac procedure. Um, I think um, um, her uh, um, cardiologist wanted to take her to the EP lab uh, to try and uh, see if he could uh, provoke a, a, an arrhythmia and do uh, in preparation for an ablation. And um, uh, so it was an you know it was an elective procedure. She was came in to be admitted, and um, she had had some kind of dental issues. In, in the uh, past, and he told her to leave her partials at home because he didn't want bacteria floating around her system. And so when she came in, obviously she was missing some teeth. Um, the hospitalist who admitted her noted in her chart that she was missing teeth and actually wrote, she probably has a history of drug use. And that got repeated from nurse to nurse from hospitalist to hospitalist. And as a result, when she actually did have, you know, some low back pain from laying on those uncomfortable beds and uh, called the night nurse to request, um, you know, some pain medicine, they wouldn't give it. So she was drug seeking. And, and she became incensed and, and said, I, I, I'm 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 leaving AMA. And I actually got called because I was a house MD that night. And and the woman was in tears. I mean, just she's like, how could they treat me this way? Why are they, you know, saying these things? And, you know, and I was fortunately able to talk her down and and tell her, look, let's focus on you getting this procedure you need. I'll make sure you get your pain medicine, and you can request a different doctor in the morning. Uh, but this was wrong. It was unfair. Um, and, and I'm sorry this happened to you. But these are the kinds of things that happen. Yeah. Um, um, There's an article I recently read. It's actually pretty similar. But there is a racial uh, assumption that African-Americans can endure pain better yeah. than Caucasians and might actually get appropriate narcotic or other pain relief less often based on that assumption. Do you have a comment on that? that, that oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I uh, This is probably 20 years ago now. I used to, before I was treated for H. pylori, I used to have recurrent bouts of gastritis. I mean, severe gastritis. Um, that would have me literally doubled over on the floor, vomiting like crazy, crying out in agony. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, I think you have an idea of when acid is eroding into your stomach, it is horrifically painful. And this, I had an attack one um, afternoon on a Saturday, had to call EMT. Um, and they literally had to come in my house, pick me up off the floor, lock my door, took me to the local hospital, um, the ED. They, you know, did the, you know, uh, protonics, Pepsid, um, um, dilated IV, two step, took care of the pain, admitted me, and then the pain medicine wore off. And um, I called my nurse and I said, I, you know, I, I need something to, to, 
take care of this pain. And the doctor had written for, um, what was it? Uh, 25 milligrams of dilated every, was it six hours? Yeah. Dilated only lasts two to three hours. And 25 milligrams is probably enough for a baby. I mean, well, it's, that's an exaggeration, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, it, <laughs> it was just stunning, man. You know, and I'm just like, that order was not even worth the paper was written on. I mean, not only did you underdose me, but then you wrote it for an interval that was completely wrong. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, even you though think, I was a doctor. You know, do you look back at that with the sense it was just an inexperienced or negligent physician, not necessarily in the legal term, or there was an assumption you're a big, strong man of African-American background and you, you, you tough it up. I mean, or some such convoluted, you know, uh, uh, lack Joel, of empathy. Yeah. Joel, I, I have to give everybody um, the uh, credence to say, if you went through medical school and you passed the boards, you ought to know your pharmacology. Yeah. And you ought to know what an adequate dose is and what an appropriate dosing to interval is. And, and, and I'm not going to make excuses for that because um, I wouldn't make excuses for myself. Um, I mean, that's ridiculous. And, 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 and I, I'm just, that made no sense either way you looked at it. So, and it, and this happens too often to, to, to black people and other people of color for us to keep excusing it and making excuses for okay. it. Um, you know, Serena Williams, um, said that when she had her PEs after her, um, baby was, 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 was born and she kept telling her doctor, I'm having these chest pains. They kept dismissing it, yeah. um, uh, you know, until she had an, um, a near crisis um, and it was diagnosed. <laughs>